Uncivilized Vitality, this is the packing list for the 202. Uh, Fieldcraft 202 is, is the uh, intermediate to advanced uh, Fieldcraft as opposed to the 101 where we just talk about a few basic knots and the basics of shelter. You're going to be a little more self-sufficient on this one, so this is the gear that you need to bring. Um, so let's go over that. First and foremost, it's going to be in November in northern Michigan, so it's going to be a little cool, so you're going to build your kit around uh, staying warm and sleeping warm. To that end, um, I just got back uh, with the family from this weekend and I wore shorts and a flannel and tennis shoes and since it dipped into the mid to upper 30s <laughs> and I took this to sleep with, that was a mistake. So that's why I thought I'd do this video right now to remind you what to do. First and foremost, you're going to need a pair of uh, wicking, uh, a wicking underlayer, so some thermals, a top and a bottom. You can wear them or save them for nighttime and a pair of wool socks and then you need a, a hat to sleep in or um, a buff because then you can put the buff on to sleep in or you can put that on during the day if you get chilly but you're going to need a buff and or a wool hat. I also suggest a daytime hat uh, like just your standard sun hat. So have a hat and then have something, uh, a warm hat or buff to sleep in. All right, wool socks and underlayer. You're also going to need a large cotton morigami or a shemog size and or uh, a towel. So this is usually uh, what I end up taking is my Turkish towel. I use that for a pillow and you're going to need it for a few different things. Large piece of cotton. Your um, multi-hood. If you don't know what the hood is, check out some of the other videos. This is just a large um, hoop sewn. We're going to use this for a lot of different things on the 202, so you're going to need to bring a hood. Now, um, that should take care of your, oh, and a pair of leather gloves. You're going to have to have a pair of leather gloves. So that's for your clothing. You're going to need clothing you wear. I recommend some boots, hat, gloves, good shoes, extra pair of wool socks, underlayer, um, a buff or a wool hat to sleep in, a Turkish towel or a shemog size morgami, and the multi hood. Okay, now <clears throat> to sleeping. So you're gonna need some kind of ground sheet and you can use one of these short, um, like this is an old just piece of that space blanket reflective sheet or a couple of these 55 gallon drum liners and or, uh, or and a sleeping pad of some sort. So either an inflatable pad or just an accordion um, thermo rest or one of those roll out foam pads Combine that with your ground sheet and or your um, drum liner and you'll be able to make a shelter on the ground. You also are going to need a tarp to go over top of you. You're going to need a 5x7 tarp or uh, at biggest a 10x10. 10 10. So somewhere between 5x7 or 10x10. 10 10. Just a cheap tarp will work. If you don't have a tarp, we'll be able to supply them. Any of the gear you don't have, if you get the call in early enough to um, Bonnie, we can get those things set aside to you. So that's going to be your shelter. You may choose to sleep in a hammock at the 202, so we're going to talk about how to do that. Uh, so we do have these available. This is just a, a Kamek Rue single, so it's, uh, it's not very big, uh, but it's enough to get by for a night or two, and it comes with a pair of really bright orange tree straps, tree hugger straps, so that I don't get any of those left behind. Okay, So you can go hammock, or ground. If you go ground, you're going to need a pad, a ground sheet, um, and a drum lighter can serve both purposes. You're going to go in the hammock. You're going to need uh, just the hammock. We'll, we'll talk about what else you need in a minute. And you're going to need a tarp to sleep under, whether you're on the ground or the hammock. You might want to do one the first night and then the other one the second night so you can kind of see um, what you think about either one. Now, you're going to need at least two blankets and a sleeping bag. Um, if you're in the hammock, you're going to need one of those sleeping bag or blankets to form, to, to function as your underquilt. Sleeping in a hammock without any underquilt is like sleeping in half a uh, sleeping bag. You're losing heat uh, below and out to the side, but you're only covered on the top, you will freeze. So you're gonna have to have a, an underquilt. What I do, uh, especially since it's only November, we're not into winter, is I will use my Helicon Text uh, Swagman, my Swagman um, poncho liner. I'll use that as my underquilt 
at a time like this. And then inside I have my, my patu, which is just a yak wool uh, blanket, right? I use my patu as my blanket inside my hammock. And then I have a uh, quilted, um, well, quilt. So you could use a sleeping bag or a quilt. So those are the three items I'm gonna bring to keep me warm, either in my hammock or if I make a shelter on the ground, I'll use those uh, to stay warm. If you, if plus I have the hat and obviously my socks and such, if you sleep cold, bring another blanket, right? Bring another quilt, bring a whoopee, bring something that's gonna contribute to your warmth at night because that's gonna be your main, uh, main area of complaint, I think. All right, so that's going to be there. You're also going to need um, a poncho. You have to have a poncho. If you don't want to bring a five by seven cheap tarp, you want to try it with just the poncho, that's fine too. You, if it rains, uh, you just wear your poncho during the day and then at night we'll make a shelter out of it. But you have to have a poncho, just the standard USGI size, not a cheap uh, one use poncho, but something that has grommets uh, or tie outs or something that can take a little bit of pressure in case we make it into a shelter. I suggest bringing the small tarp and a poncho and a drum liner. We can make you a great shelter either over your hammock or just as uh, rain gear. Plus these come in good, uh, come in handy for making an under quilt, an underlayment layer that'll prevent the wind from pulling a lot of convective heat off. So you have to have a poncho. Okay, so that should be it for clothing, shelter, and sleeping. Obviously, you're going to need a bag to carry all this stuff in. All right, something that'll fit your blankets. Basically, a duffel bag you can stuff all those into and carry with you. Now, you're going to need some other uh, tools besides shelter and clothing. Or, um, yeah, shelter and cloth and clothing. So, let's go uh, right down the line. Let's go to cutting and digging next. You're going to need... Um, two knives. You're going to need a small knife or a belt knife, whatever you need. Uh, I usually just have this orange handled one on me. I had my neck knife on me this weekend because it's just the wife and the boys and I. But usually I'll have this small knife on me, a small fixed blade, no folder, and you need to have some sort of multi-tool. Okay. If you don't have a multi-tool, uh, bring a small pair of pliers. Go to the hardware store, get a small pair of channel locks or vice grips or pliers. Or if you're feeling bougie, buy some of those Knippic um, channel locks. Those are super sweet. I just can't afford them. Bring a pair of pliers or a multi-tool and something that has a secondary blade on it. So you can bring a small folding blade and a pair of pliers, or you can just bring a multi-tool. Okay. So you'll have two knives. You're also going to need a saw. Everybody's going to need to bring a saw. You can bring a small folding saw like this Baco Laplander. We have some uh, Sven saws uh, available to, to loan out. You can pick up a small uh, lake and trail folding saw like this at Walmart for like 10 bucks. Everybody needs a saw in addition to their uh, two knives. So that's just an option, that saw. Everybody's going to uh, want to bring an ax or a hatchet. I will probably pack one out just for, um, just in case we need one in the group but we're not gonna go with an ax or a tomahawk. I know in Northern Michigan in November, that's an excellent cutting tool to have an ax or a hawk, but um, you won't need to bring that. Everybody's gonna bring just one small folding saw or the Sven saw, right? So you don't have to have the tomahawk. I'll probably have one with us just in case. Now, the other tool in cut and dig you're gonna need is at least your personal trowel. But beside a trowel, we're gonna have everybody bring a shovel and or an e-tool. So if you don't have a shovel, this is the Cold Steel uh, Spetsnaz Special Forces shovel. You can pick these up in a few different places. Jays, we love Jays, we always stop at Jays. Um, or you can just bring a folding e-tool um, that you can get at a surplus store, a military surplus store. Or we have a few that we're gonna loan out. As far as cut and dig goes, then you can use that if you don't have the trowel. But if you have the trowel, you're gonna need something bigger. This is just in my toilet bag. I keep the trowel in there. We're also gonna have um, some buckets. So we'll probably hand out at least a couple buckets for people to carry. All right, so that's my cut and dig. As far as fire and light go, in my pocket, and I'll talk about what you need to keep on your person. In my pocket, I have my lighter, 
uh, my uncivilized vitality setup with the candle wicking and uh, just a disposable lighter. And I have my flashlight. I also have a fire steel in my cook kit. So I have a small fire steel and some tinder in this uh, that stays with my, with my cook kit. But I keep my light. A headlamp is better actually than this little flashlight, but it's just what I have on me from this weekend. So I'll probably have that uh, a headlamp instead of my flashlight. Okay. Speaking of cooking, so I'm going to jump ahead to um, fire and light. So we're going to probably not be cooking around a fire because 202 we move around and we do small fires. You're going to need a stove or a way to heat your water and or your food individually. There's two ways you can go, several ways you can go. We have small box stoves for sale at the UV storeroom. You can go with this kind of setup, these little canisters with the little rocket stove that, that screw down on top with the little stand, right? So you can go with that. You got a lot of different options there. You can take that little canister stove. I have mine in a little padded box which I usually don't carry, but I might. Another option is to go with one of these natural fuel stoves, which is just, uh, this is actually a new one. I uh, just picked up from the Pathfinder School, because I'm gonna test it out. Never really been a fan of these cup-shaped ones, but I'm gonna give it a shake. So this is just a little natural fuel stove. You put things in there, and you set your cup right on top. Or a box, uh, one of the box stoves. We've got a video on the various uh, options for stoves. So check that out. In addition to your stove, obviously you're gonna need a cup that goes with it to heat or cook your water on or heat right in your canteen. But it's nice to have a cup to eat out of. If you have the cup, get one with a little lid. Now you've made a tiny little pot to boil, right? And cook in and something to eat with, a spoon, a fork, or some chopsticks, okay? For me, because I picked up this set to test out, the cup nests inside that stove, right? And then my canteen, actually this is the canteen that came with it, that nests right inside there. And then there's this little bag that the whole mess drops right down inside of as a canteen bottle. Zippers shut. And it's got this little pocket on the outside where I put my fire kit the lid to my little cup to make a pot, my spoon, my fire kit, a little shaker of salt because you should always have salt. And I put some of these fish mouth spreaders in there that I make a improvised bale out of for my pot in case I'm being fancy, making a sad little soup for one. All right? So there's an entire cook kit in this handy little bag. I'm going to do a separate video on this. We'll test it out. Just giving an option, uh, an idea of what you can do for cooking. Oh, I forgot to put my little natural fuel disc back in with my stove. Okay, so that's cooking. And obviously your container is going to be your canteen. You're going to need, I have two stainless steel canteens. You're also going to need, uh, or I suggest you bring something, maybe one steel canteen and then like this platypus two liter or something else you can carry water. Everybody should have at least three liters of water um, potential on them. We're going to fill up and boil and purify our water the whole weekend. We're not taking out the jugs or going by the um, pump, and we're not going to take a water filter. So we're going to be purifying our water at the 202. So you need a capacity of three liters on you okay, in one form or another. Toilet kit, we talked about that. Um, toilet trees. This is like where I keep my contact lenses, my toothbrush, my flossers, my um, rip spool, my charging cables, um, little salt, electrolyte drinks. Everything that I need personally stays right in this little bag. All right, we talked about cut and dig, fire and light, uh, the clothing, the containers. The next one we're going to talk about is cordage. You will need two um, fast ropes. Hayanawa, two fast ropes. Uh, I suggest one, at least one, is very brightly colored, right? And a carabiner. You need a carabiner that is climbing grade. If you do not have a climbing grade, meaning a, a, a legit carabiner, not something you put your keys on, an actual carabiner, that's a piece of gear you can uh, request. But you'll need a fast rope and a carabiner. 
Uh, Uncivilized Vitality, this one's we, we loan out if you need that. We also have them available for purchase. So you'll need two fast ropes, and then you will need your standard cord kit. You will need um, two 12-foot accessory cords. You will need one 36-foot uh, um, ridge line hunk of paracord. You will need three six-foot pieces with two loops on them. I have two sets of that in my cord kit. I keep that in there. Now I've also got, um, in my cord kit, I throw a little set of drip lines and a couple of grim locks, just little mini, these are like keychain carabiners. For if, if I decide to sleep in the hammock, I can rig up drip lines or some of the shock cord to keep the, the hammock up more. You will need six stakes. I've got these uh, blue um, aluminum nail type stakes because I've been trying these out lately to see if I like them. Don't know yet, I'm gonna try them out with 202. You need six stakes. And then if you do plan to sleeping in a hammock, you will need uh, straps for the tree. Uh, those are all for my hammock setup in case I decide to sleep in the hammock. If you uh, lease or borrow that from UV, you'll have that right here. Okay. So there's my cordage. So we have clothing, cutting and digging, uh, fire and light, which includes the cooking, the containers, which also kind of includes the cooking. A backpack would kind of be on the container list. You'll need somewhere to put all this, this gear in there, uh, or maybe a stuff sack to cinch it down. Salt and needle, that's gonna be your toiletry kit, your personals kit, or your toilet kit and your personals kit, and actually a little jug of salt, which I keep in my um, cook kit. And the salt and needles include your food too. So bring enough food for uh, a meal Friday night, a meal Saturday morning, a meal Saturday night, and then some either a meal or a snack on Sunday morning. So three to four meals and probably a couple snacks because everybody seems to like to snack. And we will stop and do meal times uh, together okay, on the 202. Uh, sling and spear, you just carry whatever personal protection you need. We won't be hunting, so that's, uh, that's a tool family that's um, up to you to uh, decide on. And then as far as your book, you will need a notebook and a pen. So you're going to bring a small tablet and a pen so you can keep track of the knots and the various things we're going to do um, at the 202 that's different than the 101. All right, so there's the list of gear. Now, the things you'll keep on your person at all times, obviously be at least at least one fire, at least one light, like your uh, headlamp should be in your pocket. And then I either keep my buff or my hat in my pocket. And then I have my handkerchiefs. I have, it's nice to have a, um, a bright handkerchief and then a second silk for multitude of purposes. Those things besides my cash and wallet, they stay on my body, uh, on my pockets. If you don't have pockets, or if you choose to not carry in your pockets, you can check out some sort of chest rig or a fanny pack to keep these things in. Um, and that'll help you out too. So that way you know where all your personal items and things are you can have with you at all times. So um, that's the 202. We're gonna go over, I know I didn't mention uh, medical in the salt and needle. I will be carrying a trauma kit and the guides will be carrying uh, trauma bags and first aid, um, relevant things. We're also going to talk about the uncivilized minimal uh, trauma kit at the 202. So I'll explain how these work at the 202. And uh, there's my other accessory cord. And then we'll go from there. So that's it. That's going to be the equipment list. Those are the things you need for the 202. Try not to bring anything else. I know you think you need an extra pair of clothes and uh, you know, shorts and sweaters and other things to change in and out. Or you're going to bring uh, a saw and a hatchet and a knife and another knife and another saw and a big shovel and a little shovel. Don't bring all the redundancies. The idea is to get by with just those few items in the families of tools. Um, the areas where we have the most redundancy is going to be the clothing, shelter and sleeping elements and uh, cordage. Because it's always nice to have cordage and not have to make more out there. So that's it. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, sign up for notifications when I put up these packing lists. You can see what's going on. And I'll try to get this one up right away so that the 202 people have time to go through the list, make your purchases, put your kit together, 
and or contact uh, admin to see what things we have in store that you can either purchase or borrow uh, for the Fieldcraft 202 coming up this fall. All right, that's it.